I made a video showing how to create a Python program that converts binary to decimal. So let's do the other way around. So just a real quick review. If I have a number, let's say D equals 342 in decimal and, and you know base 10. So each place is a power of 10. So we have this as, I can write this as 10 to the zero, to the zero, 10 to the one, 10 to the two. So this is one, 10, 100. So this really means three times 100 plus four times 10 plus two times one, and you get 342. Now, what about binary numbers? So binary numbers, we only have two numbers, which is zero or one. That's all that we have. So that means that we don't have a base 10, we have a base two. So we're gonna have two to the zero, and I'm writing it backwards because that's the way we write numbers, two to the one, two to the two, two to the three, two to the four, and we need more We need more digits because they only each digit's only two things long. So this is one, two, four, eight, 16, and so forth. Now, how do you take a number and represent a decimal number and convert it to binary? It's, I mean, it's not that easy, but we can do it. And I'm gonna do it the, the conceptual way that doesn't work in Python too well. So let's take a number, I'm gonna take an easy number. Let's take uh, 22. So let's say D equals 22. And I wanna write that as a binary number. Let me write my binary numbers over here. Um, so I'm gonna write one, two, four, eight, 16, 32. And so I wanna find out how many of each of these I need to get to that, right? Because it's the same thing that I do for uh, decimal numbers. So we're gonna start by looking at the largest one of these that goes in here evenly. And so 32 does not go in there. We don't know any of these 32s. I can even put a zero right there if I wanted to. I don't need that. I do need a 16. So I'm gonna put a 16 right here. Now I'm gonna say 22 minus 16 because I'm gonna add 16 to it so I need to know how much I have left over. So this is gonna be equal to six. Now I need to say, well, how many eights do I need to represent six? I don't need any, okay? So I don't need to subtract eight because I didn't use any of them. Now, how many fours do I need? Well, four goes in there one time, so I'm gonna need one. So I'm gonna take six minus four and that's equal to two. How many twos do I need? One. So I'm gonna say two minus two equals zero. And then how many ones do I need to get zero? And that's zero. So here I have the binary number one, zero, one, one, zero. And that's, we'll call that B, B and D. I think this one makes sense. It's not easy to program because you gotta say, well, I gotta go through all these numbers and find out how many go into there and then subtract it and stuff like that. We could probably make this routine, but there's a much simpler way to do this. So let's take our number D equals 22. And this is gonna be, it's called successive division. So I'm gonna start over here by finding this number. How many ones do I need? If I wanna represent this by uh, things that are power of two, well, then I'm gonna divide by two and it tells me the leftover tells me how many ones I have, right? So in this case, I'm gonna take uh, 22 divided by two. And I want to use div and mod. So I don't wanna actually divide. I don't wanna get 11.5 or 11. I don't want, I actually do wanna get 11. <laughs> but we're gonna see that we don't wanna actually do division because we don't want decimal numbers. I wanna know the remainder. So I'm gonna divide this by two. And so that, if I divide that by two, I get 11 plus a remainder of zero. That remainder is really important because that's my first number in my binary on my rightmost number is zero. I don't have to have any leftover ones. This is a, a multiple of two, so I don't need any ones to make my number. Now I'm gonna take this number and I'm gonna divide that by two. And that's gonna be equal to, uh, goodness, five plus one. Right. So if I divide this by two, I get five and then have a remainder of one. So that remainder of one's important. I'm gonna put that right here. That's my next number, right? That tells me how many twos I have, which doesn't really make sense, but that really, I mean, it does make sense, but it, it may seem non-intuitive. Now I'm gonna take the five and I'm gonna divide by two and I get 
5 divided by 2 is 2 plus 1. So there's my next number, 1. That's the remainder. Now I'm going to take this. 2 divided by 2 is equal to uh, 2. No, it's equal to 1. That was dumb. Plus 0. So I have 0. And now I have to have 1 divided by 2. That's going to be equal to 0 plus a remainder of 1. And so that's 1. And there's my binary number right there. Same thing. Okay, this is much easier to do in Python, um, and it seems weird because you're down here dividing one by two, and that's your that's your let's see one two four eight that's your sixteenth place, right? But it does work. I mean, you could do the same thing uh, with converting. Well, we wouldn't want to convert a decimal number to decimal number divided by ten, but it does work. Okay, so let's do this in Python. I'm going to start from a hundred percent scratch. 100% scratch. Okay, so jumping over to Python, and I'm going to give you the code here, so don't worry about the code. Let me make this a little bit bigger. There, that's a little bit bigger. Oh, that's too big. No, it's not too big. It just, no, it got really weird. That's good. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, and I'm using WebV Python. You could use any version of Python. I'm not using any modules. This is all stuff that's built into any Python, so it should work. So you can copy this code and put it in your own Python. You could use Google Colab. You could use any of the Python things will work. I just feel like I have an allegiance to WebV Python because I use it in a lot of other things, and I don't want it to get mad at me for using something else. That'd be cheating on, on WebV Python. Let's start with the number. I'm going to use the same one, d equals 22. That's my number. That's the number I want to convert to. That's my decimal number I want to convert to binary. And now I'm, I need a list. I'm going to start with a list. I'm going to keep finding numbers, and I want to put those numbers into a list. Let me. This looks like it should be a little bit bigger. Okay. So I'm going to call b as my list. That's my binary number. It's empty right now, but I could put a number of things in there if I wanted to, and I'm going to. Now what I want to do is to divide D by the number 2 and keep dividing D divided by 2 until I don't have any more, uh, until it's 0. Um, so I, I just want to show you something that's kind of very useful. The, the first is um, mod. Okay. So let's take that. If you take 22, I'm going to print 22. I'm going to put D mod. In Python, mod is the percent sign mod 2. What this does is it divides by 2 and it gives you the remainder. So this should be 0. 0. If I do, um, if let's change this to 23 and I divide that by 2, I should have a remainder of 1. 1. Okay, so that's what this is doing. It's, div it's dividing and it's giving you the remainder. Now I want to show you something else really useful. Uh, and that is this idea of changing a variable. Suppose I have a variable d as 22, and I say d equals d plus 1. And, and in algebraic sense, that's like, why would you do that? The d's cancel. It's not a good thing. In Python, this equal sign means make it equal to. So it says take the value of, of d, which is 22, add 1 to it, and then make that the value of d. So if I print d, if I print d before this, I get 22. d after this is 23. So I can change the number. I don't need a whole bunch of numbers. I can just change that number. Okay, so we're going to use that. So now let's do this. Oh, I need to do uh, div. So let's say uh, print, let's just print d div is going to be the division without any remainder. So it's going to give you an integer value. And in Python, you do that with divide, divide, or slash, slash. So this should be um, 11. 11. Okay. Got it? Uh, yes. Let's do something. Okay. So now let's say we can do this. While d is greater than zero. So this will keep doing everything below in this loop until d is not is less than zero uh, or, or equal to zero. If it's equal to zero, that's not greater than zero, it will stop. And so what I can do is divide div d by two until I get to zero. So let's just do that. I'm gonna say print d, uh, d equals d divided by div two, and then that's it. Let's just run this. 
Now you gotta be careful through these while loops. You can, if you do something crazy, it can do an infinite loop and never get to that condition. But here I think we'll be okay. So it says 22, 11, 5, 2, 1. Those are the exact same numbers I had before, so that's good. Now let's do uh, print the remainder. Let's calculate the remainder and print the remainder. So I'm gonna do that. And let's calculate the remainder before I divide, right? Because I wanna use that D. So let's say R is D mod two. That will give me the remainder. If I did that afterwards, I'd miss that first number. And let's print this R, oops. Print, now we're just gonna print the remainders. And that those are the numbers I want. And that's my binary number right there. All I need to do is to add that to a list or something or a string. I, I like to add it to, I like to add it to a, a, a list and you don't really have to do this, but I'm gonna do this. Now, let's make a list uh, of the binary numbers. I already did that B. All I need to do is instead of printing this, I just need to add it to the list. So we can do that in this operation like that. So that says take the list B, add the element R to it, and then we'll be fine. And if this is wrong, actually, just so you know, uh, I'm gonna print that after the loop. If you dedent, if you dedent, uh, it's no longer in the loop. So I'm gonna say print uh, B equals uh, B, and it's gonna be wrong. You notice it's wrong, it's backwards. Do you notice it's backwards? Because when I add something to a list, it adds it to this side over here. It doesn't add it to that side. So what I, I can fix that. Instead of using this, I'm gonna say uh, b dot insert, and, I, and what place do I wanna play? I wanna insert it at the beginning of the list, so zero. Zero is the first element, and I wanna add r. That's it, I'm done. Okay, let's make it a little bit prettier, right? That's the same number I got on, on paper. And then we can uh, change it up. I, I don't like the list, so let's actually make it a string. Um, and again, this may not be the best way to do make a string, but this is the way I like to do it. So I'm gonna make an empty string. Um, I'm gonna call it BSTR, and it's just an empty string. And then I will make a loop going through the list of B uh, for I in B do the following, just add it to the string. So BSTR, the string, is equal to what it was before, plus, uh, the string of i. So I'm gonna take that value in the list, the number, and I'm gonna turn it into a string and then add it to my string. And now I have this b s t r. Let's run that. There you go. There's my number. Okay, now let's make everything really nice. I'm gonna go down here. I'm gonna say uh, print a d equals D before I gotta do that before I start messing with that value of D and then print B equals that. So this will convert it and it'll show you everything right there. So it says D is 22 and the binary number is 10110. Now let's go out of control. Let's make a giant number. Um, let's say 500 and tw 5012. Why would I do that? I don't know. Let's just see if it works. It might break. I should save this first, shouldn't I? Uh, Let's see, binary, no, 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 Des. I'm gonna fix the title. If the title doesn't show up, I have it too small. Okay, I'll fix that. Uh, let's see if this actually runs. There you go. Now, it's possible I made a program that converts binary to decimal. You can copy this and paste it in there and see if it works. That'd just be kind of fun. Um, but there you go, decimal to binary. If you wanna challenge yourself, you can see if you can do the, uh, the, the greatest factor method, where you find the greatest value, uh, factor of two that will go in there and then use that to find the next factor and so forth. Um, it, it's possible. It just takes a little bit more work. This is pretty easy uh, to understand how to do it in Python. I don't think that success, successive division is easy to understand as much as the other way, but still, we got it to work. Good job. The code's down below, and a link to the previous video down below.